Welcome back guys. We're gonna do a little some upgrades here to the old Catch Power 100. Um, I've got a couple of things that I've been wanting to add and work <clears throat> kind of in the works and something I wanted to do since before I got it. And one of those things is going to be front navigation lights just so I can be seen. Um, I've got some interior lights which are pretty cool that I'm gonna be putting in but more importantly to handle all of this and to help with my depth finder is I have a fuse box it's from Marine it's got a little cover it's got all the stickers I think it was I think it was 15 bucks on Amazon super cheap um, I run one very similar to this in my big boat and then I've got this mini switch panel so it's got the double USB ports here and then it's got a voltage meter, so it'll always tell me what my big battery's saying. Um, it's got all the switches, so I can have one for navigation lights, one for interior lights, and then I'll have a third one for most likely is what is going to be, I wanna put a front spotlight on it probably. I might, I might not, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't do a lot of fishing at night, but <clears throat> for the fishing I do do at night or in the early dusk or the evenings, I want to be seen. Um, I've got the I've got the Yak Attack flag with a little light on top, but it's not, even though I have the LED one, it's not that bright. So I just want to make sure I can be seen. And I've already got onboard power because I've got that 100 amp hour uh, lithium battery. But what we're going to be doing is my fuse box I'll be mounting on the inside of the lid right here <clears throat> like that and it's got a cover so I don't have to worry about it contacting my battery and then my switch panel is going to go where the cell phone holder went which while I really like the cell phone holder I can come up with something else for that because I really like this location for my switches and I can always see my primary voltage because I am still running two batteries. I've got a 10 amp hour for my depth finder which is separate which I'll still wire. I'll probably wire into my fuse block just so it's got a better fuse protection and then I got the big battery. So I've got two batteries up front. So. I'm going to throw you guys in time-lapse mode so you don't have to sit here for an hour or whatever and watch me drill a bunch of holes and kind of figure this out. All right, so nighttime snuck up on me pretty quickly there. Um, I got the fuse box mounted, and I got that in, and I got the first two holes cut for my switch panel. However, when I was taking the switches apart so I could take them out of the panel, which you can't now see, um, it the switch is broke. But since how it is dark, this does give me an opportunity to show you how ridiculously bright these LEDs are. So this first one I got here is the red light for my navigation lights and it is really bright. Next up I'll show you that uh, green navigation light well before I mount it and whatnot. It's also incredibly bright. Oh, 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 it's hard because it's blinding me while I'm trying to 
touch it to the battery. Yeah. That's bright. And then I got this big roll of lights. Here. These are the white ones. These are for the inside. So I can flip them on so I can see what I'm doing if I need to like retie something or whatever, you know. I mean, you'll see these after I get them installed, but I'll show them to you now. It's kind of ridiculously bright. It's way brighter than I expected. So, not really quite sure what I'm going to do. But, with this light here, stick those in there for a second. So, how I'm cutting these holes here is I'm using the cutting blade on my soldering iron to cut the holes. See? It doesn't have to be pretty, but it has everything has to fit. And they fit because I've got that bezel that goes over it. Just push it in there. Because I want these to be fairly tight. Smack it a little bit. There you go. It's in. So what I'll go back do, or go back and do, is I'll cut back with my cutting blade and my soldering iron just a little bit to get rid of that edge. So when I put, oh, there goes the lights. Anyway, so when I go to put the panel on, it'll sit completely flush. So anyway, this is gonna be definitely a two-part video, guys. Um, I'll get this knocked out during daylight, hopefully tomorrow when I get home from work. The problem is with uh, the new job going on, I just, I get home a little bit later and the days are getting shorter, rapidly shorter up here. And that's one of the reasons why I want to get these lights all put on everything. But I'll do more and well, you're going to see it here in the next, oh, right now. Okay, finally daylight again. Um, I got some new switches and to sh kind of show you guys what happened. So I went ahead and contacted Amazon, of course. They sent me another switch panel here. Same exact one I got, just I haven't broken this one or it hasn't fallen apart. So when I took the wires out of this one so I could color in these slots so I could cut it out, <clears throat> the tabs where the wires go in broke off of all of them. Now, the ground ones could probably easily go back in. No big deal, okay? That's not where the issue lies. The issue lies is the power ones, most of them snapped off, okay? These aren't, these connectors on here aren't a locking style of, by any means, so it wasn't like I took these apart incorrectly. It's that they actually just snapped off because they didn't they didn't come out entirely. Um, so that's rather upsetting, but I got another one, so hopefully I can cut this out and go ahead and get this all ready to go. Um, for what you guys probably couldn't see very well was the soldering iron I was using. It has a cutting edge on it. Um, and it actually bent a little bit after cutting for so long. And to show you the area that I've got to clean up a little bit so it sits flush is this. Which, it's no big deal. I'll just cut it again and knock that off. It's not a hard fix in this, by any means. Um, I do have my fuse box already in. Already riveted up. I think I already showed you that. But we'll touch base on all this after I get it all, all installed. And then I'll grab some wire and we'll head wire it up. Which this whole thing is made really easy because I've got the breaker and everything else is eyelets. And we'll just get started working on this.
All right, now I've basically got my my holes cut the way I want. They don't look good now, but that that doesn't matter. It's flat. And flip them up to the inside. And I took the edges off with a pair of pliers. That was pretty easy. I kind of wish I would have thought about that about 30 seconds sooner, but I didn't. So here we are. Um, yeah, here's the thing. All this nasty business where I had to re-level and whatnot, as soon as I put the plate on, you don't see any of it anymore. It's all gone. And that's really what I'm looking for. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rivet this thing on here. And for some of you wondering why I'm using rivets instead of using like screws or nuts and bolts, one, rivets to me are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than just screws and bolts plus there's not a lot hanging out the other side <clears throat> you know you don't have to worry about it loosening up you don't have to worry about any of that stuff with rivets you just put them on now i will admit they are a little bit more of a pain to take off than like a screw or a nut and bolt type of deal but that's re easily rectified with a drill. Plus, with a rivet, I don't have to have <clears throat> be able to get to both sides. I just have to be able to get my riveter on it. And then we're done. So that part's done. <clears throat> All I gotta do, put this stuff on here, like that, put my USB port on, just like that, tighten it up from the other side, and this part's essentially done. Um, this really was the hard part, was cutting that. Now looking back on it, what I should have done was I probably should have used, like, the jigsaw or something like that like you know like most people would but I wanted to do it this way for it's just it's easier it's quieter you don't have to have power you don't have to have any of that other stuff um, and it's put together I mean really I'm an hour, not even an hour into this. I think probably like 45 minutes on this total install here. <clears throat> I'll bring you guys over here in a minute to take a peek at how this looks on the inside. And it's got plenty of room to clear the battery and everything else in here. Um, so, Here's the fuse box. I gotta put fuses in here, run the wiring for that. Then basically all the wiring from here is going to run to the switches. Okay, so you got your open sources to send out to whatever you're powering. Um, they're all gonna share a common ground. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that idea. Um, I might just run it back to the ground on the fuse box and then back to the battery. I don't know. Um, we'll see how the wiring starts to look when I start to do it, but yeah Get this all flip back over There you go guys Super easy super quick Probably straighten those a little bit The only thing I really lost was that cell phone holder that was right there And if I really wanted to I could probably throw that band back on there and take the panel off if I decide that I don't like this Grant, I got those ugly holes, but by doing it my way, I can always put those back in pretty easily. Just plastic weld them back in. Um, yeah, the rivets, maybe I should have went with black ones, but I like the silver ones. They're not a big deal to me. Um, 
I just, I like the way this is turning out already. Uh, yeah. It's gone really, really smoothly. So really the next thing I gotta do is I gotta go grab my batteries and then grab some wire and start trying to figure out how I want to put everything. Because I've been debating back and forth how I wanted to handle the wiring for the bow lights. If I wanted to run it up over and through right here so I didn't have to drill any holes in the hull, which I kind of would really like to not drill holes in my hull. For obvious, I don't want to drill holes in my hull reasons. However, it won't be as clean if I do that. And by drilling the holes in the hull, because there's such a lip around the edge of the boat. Thank you guys. So underneath here, there's a pretty big gap. I was gonna stuff my lights down behind that, but I hadn't decided if I wanted to drill the hole towards the point of the bow and then fill it with silicone, or if I wanted to take it and drill the hole back here and fill it with silicone where there's less likely for water to come in. Or I could put it up here on this surface and just lay the wires over the top, which would look kind of bad. Yeah, uh, we'll figure it out. It's a learning curve. I might lay them over the top and like tape them to the sides of the boat because I brought tape out. Yeah, I brought tape out so I can set them up there and see how I like the looks of it before I start really going into it. But so far with the switches, I am super, super happy. I need, to, I need to clean this off, but it turned out great. Um, and plus this plastic material, I didn't even think about it earlier when I was trying to cut it back with the knife or the hot knife on my soldering iron is this plastic. So different plastics do different things when you melt it or you cut it. Um, some plastics just stay gooey and go back to the exact way that they were. This plastic, it's made out of a harder, more, I don't want to say brittle, but it's more of a brittle plastic. So when it gets hot, you can just pull it off with pliers or your fingers and you're left with that nice edge. So that was, that was something I should have thought about sooner because I know that. I don't know why I didn't think about it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to call that complete on the switch and the fuse box install. Um, if you guys like this type of thing or you wanted to know more about this, it's just, yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, I, I have no problem providing more content like this. I just, I don't know how much effort I want to put into content. I mean, I'm, I'm going to do this, but if I'm going to go into the detail that I usually go into on my videos on how I do things or why I do things the way I do them. Um, I might just show how I did it and the steps versus doing a long video like this if not a lot of people absolutely love it. Um, because it, 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 I mean this took me two days but that's because I get home from work late and it got dark and I mean I've got lights I could have put up but it wasn't that serious to drag out an extension cord, you know? Um, yeah. So, if you guys like this, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think I should do next and your thoughts or things that you've done to yours if you have a Catch Power 100. Um, but yeah, we're gonna call this a wrap because these look awesome. I'm super happy with these, actually. I'm super not happy that this one broke, but Amazon took care of it, so it doesn't really matter. All right. Take care. Peace, guys. Tight lines.